Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. We're going to stay right there for the remainder of our um, of our series. Is that, is that brother, is it Terrence, brother Carl, is that his name? Terrence? Yeah. Amen. Tell him we miss him. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Tell him we miss him. Yeah, he's under the weather. Amen. That I understand. Amen. Tell him to put the weather under him. Come on. Amen. The Bible says we're more than conquerors. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Preparing for your next Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. Amen. It says, for I know the plans or the thoughts that I think of you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. That is to say that God thinks about you. God has you on his mind. You know, and I found out, I've come to a conclusion that you don't ever have to think about me. As long as God is thinking about me, that's all that really matters. And then he tells me what his thoughts are. They're good. They're not evil. They're to bless me and give me peace. Amen. Amen. So I don't have to worry. I don't have to be frustrated because God gives me peace no matter what's Amen. going on. Amen. I promise you, if you stop paying so much attention to what's going on around you, uh -huh. the uh -huh. negative things, uh -huh. the unfortunate things, uh -huh. and really focus on the good things, you'll find out that you can really walk in peace Amen. knowing that God has it all worked out. Amen. It's amazing how we go from circumstance to circumstance, from trauma to trauma, from issue to issue, and we act like God didn't bring us out the last time. Like it's a new problem. We've had problems before, had some worse than what we got. And we panic and we get to church and we pray and we cry and we call people and we get on Facebook and we put our problems out there. But did not God bring you through the last time you was in situation? So why can't you walk in confidence knowing he got me this time? You know, somebody tell me God's got you. God's got you. Amen. You got to say it like you mean it. Look at him one more time. Act like you mean it. Tell me God's got you. Amen. That would have felt better when you said it. Amen. Prepare it for your next. I like this series because, I, as I said last Sunday, the reality is, is next is coming. Uh -huh. Amen. Somebody, some people are satisfied with where they are, yeah. but I hate to break it to you. Next yeah. is on the way. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But the problem I think that plagues us in our human experience is what is next? Since I know next is coming, what is next for me? Now, that answer has all to do with how you see yourself mm -hmm. and how you see your position in the Lord. Yeah. If you keep God uh, uh, subtracted, if you keep him extracted from your life, if you keep him separate and you only use God occasionally, mm -hmm. are y'all listening? Mm -hmm. Then you will only get occasional results. Come on. Come on. See, I like all the time, all the ways. Anything but all in it. Put God next to it. I'm good. Are you listening to it? I don't know sometimes, every now and then. Because I listen, I might need a real bad, and that time may not be this time. Are you with me? So as you go through life and you get to a point in your life, and sometimes we've gotten to a point where we're arrived. We've worked so hard. Uh, to get to a point to establish ourselves to, to whether it's fixing your relationship, your marriage, whether it's uh, mending relationships between uh, uh, brothers or sisters or children and parents, whether it's uh, 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 getting this job you've always wanted, whether it's reaching that educational status you've always wanted to have, whether it's getting your credit the way you always wanted to get, whatever it is. I don't care if it's getting rid of some habits that you said you thought you would never get rid of. Maybe it's losing them 10 pounds that you struggled so hard for. It seems like the more you die, the heavier you get. 
I'm telling you, it, I, it's, that's the devil. I yes, promise you, that's the yes, devil. It is. Listen, yes, it is. I, I guarantee you. But I'm gonna tell you a secret. We gonna keep yes. moving. I'm gonna tell you because everybody got these big dollar plans of how to drop weight. Less calories means less weight. Uh -huh. I'm believing it just like that. <laughs> the less you eat, the more you will lose weight. You ain't gotta go to the gym. I would encourage you to go. Amen. You gotta stay fit. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. I God gonna use you when you broke up. That's true. You ain't getting out of bed. You rolling out of bed. God can't use you like that. But I do understand. But I, I, I tell you, when you get old, old, this, you got to be serious, minded person to get old. And sometimes I get my, I'm, I'm in my car and I go to get out. Brother Carl, I gotta think about it, how I'm gonna get out the car. I used to just jump out and I would do I put one leg out, two legs out, and hold on to the door. <laughs> it's just, you know, they ain't like a fitness, this old dirt age. Amen. Think about it, your body don't wanna move. But your next, what you what, when you get to that point, what am I doing next? And some people look at them look at themselves based on their past, and we talked about that. And if you don't have a lot of successes in your past, a lot of victories in your past, if your past is full of a lot of disdain and discomfort and disappointment, you'll start to go, man, maybe my next, maybe I don't want to know what my next is, but next is coming. Yeah. It's, it's definitely coming, like tomorrow is coming, the next minute is coming, the next hour is coming, if you live, your birthday is coming, it's coming, yeah. so you have to be prepared for what's coming next, but yeah. the problem is we don't always know what's coming next. Yeah. Well, let me help you. Because I think you got it by now. I, let me help you with your next. You know your next is, tell your, ne your neighbor, my next is good. My next is good. Yes, Lord. I don't know what your next is going to be good, yes. but my next is going to be good. Yes. How do I know? You don't know if your next is going to be doing good. Yes, I do. Because the Bible tells me that I can, one, have whatsoever I say. Yes. That's the first thing. Yes. Second thing the Bible says, I am more than a conqueror. Yes. Third thing the Bible says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. The next thing the Bible says right here in Jeremiah 29 and 11, that God is thinking about me and his thoughts are good and not of evil. And it's, he's going to bring me to an expected end. Well, what expectation is that? That's his expectation, not mine. Because I've been disappointed a couple of times in my expectations. But God is never disappointed because he's always and already planned out and plotted out our lives. See, you already know good is coming. Yeah. Amen. Can't nobody encourage you better than God. Because yeah. if your friends can talk to you, your neighbor can tell you, it's going to be all right as many times as they want to. You don't really know until God tell you, it's going to be all right. Amen. So you got to prophesy to yourself and say, listen, it's going to be all right. Yeah. And my better is going to get better than that. Because I deserve it. And you cannot look at yourself as though you don't deserve it. You hear people say, Lord, I know I don't deserve it. Stop saying that. Yes, you do. You are bought by the blood of Christ. You deserve everything good that's coming to you and more. You've got to start being greedy in God. God is humongous. He's very, very, very large. Yes. He's great. He's wonderful. He's magnanimous. He's awesome. Yeah. He's amazing. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. He yeah. has no counterpart. He has no he has no peer. He has no combatant. He's the best thing that ever happened to everybody on the planet. Yeah. There's nothing he cannot do. If he can do anything, why do I shortchange God and ask him for small stuff when he can do big stuff? just as easy as he can do the small stuff. The problem is, we got a small mind. Well, I, I might get the little stuff, but I'm not sure about the big stuff. I can have the big stuff too. And God will bless you beyond your education, beyond your credit, beyond your money. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? How many of y'all ever lost your job and still, all your bills still got paid? See, that, 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 that ought to be an encouragement yes. for those that may, might lose their job mm -hmm. 
and wondering what's going to happen. I'm not wondering what's going to happen. I know exactly what's going to happen. God's going to take care of me until he gives me another job. Amen. I told the Lord, I want you, I want the job you want me to have. Because I'm too old to be going through drama and stress on the job. And I didn't come here for that. Deal with crazy folk. No, I'm not doing that. Y'all will keep that. Because my God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory. So I ain't even hurting. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. Oh, I might get a little low it. That's all right. Every time I need to go to the gas station, I got gas. Now. Every time I need to go to school, get some eggs. Hey, from they so high, that's all right. I can still get them. When I was young, you used to break the box in half and get a half dozen. Now you got to get the whole dozen. Now. It's all or nothing at all. But that's all right. God allows me to get all. Are you listening? Amen. So my next is wonderful. It doesn't mean my next work does not come with a challenge. It doesn't mean it doesn't come with an obstacle. It just tells me that if my next is a challenge or an obstacle, what it's saying is that I am able to overcome. I'm able to subdue it. That means God wants to teach me something else that I didn't know the last time. Because he knows the next, he's preparing me for the next thing after the next thing that's after the next thing. Because I'm going to live to see the next thing after the next thing after the next thing. And I tell folks all the time, I'm going to be about 113 years old, then me and God going to negotiate the rest of the years. You ain't going to tell me when to die. Oh, he about 85, he ain't got long. You're a blind wonder. I'm going to be around here for a long time. I ain't got nowhere to go. Listen, you ain't got to sing, save no seat for me, because my seat is already reserved. I ain't wondering if I'm going to heaven. I know when I close my eyes, I'm going to transport, transfer from this life to the next, and I'm going to be with the Lord. Since I know where I'm going, and my seat is reserved, and you can't crown it until I get there, why would I be in a hurry? I'm going to take my time. Are y'all hearing me? I'm not finished with the work that I want to do. And when it gets ready to call me, I'm going to be like Hezekiah. I'm going to turn my face to the wall and say, Lord, I ain't done yet. It's the most stuff I want to do. He's going to give me some more time. You better prophesy your ending. Because folks is prophesying your present right now. You ain't got nothing. You ain't going to never be nothing. Why are you trying to do that? You told old to go back to school. You need to get your job. You need to mind your business. Work on you. People always give you advice about your life and their life is raggedy. I'm confused. You can have a really come up with a good idea. God can put something in your heart that you want to do and people will look at you and they would decide that you're not capable, not able, don't have the time, you're not powerful enough to get it done. I tell you all the time, stop living your life through other people's faith. Because when they give you advice, they give you advice out of their faith, out of what they see, not out of what you see. Amen. If Moses had listened to the children of Israel, he'd have, they'd have left them in Egypt. Because they told him, we told you to leave us alone. Why you brought us out here in the wilderness to die? At least we had graves in Egypt. It doesn't matter Amen. where you die. You got free folk with a slave mentality. Which brings me to my first point. We talk about preparing for your next. And you got to prepare because next is coming. Tell your neighbor, next is coming. The first thing you got to do, you got to consider the people in your path. If you want your next to be fruitful, you got to consider the people in your path. Proverbs 22 Verse 24 and 25 says, Make no friendship with the man given to anger, uh -huh. nor go with a wrathful man, lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself in the same. Stop spending time with folk that argue all the time. They got stuff negative and say, But that's my friend. You need to change your wow. friend. Your friends should draw you into gossip and foolishness. And that's all you got to talk to, talk about. Maybe you need to put duct tape over your mouth and pull out all your teeth so you can't talk or something. Because there's something more 
value to talk about than other people or things. Yeah. Ain't got nothing positive to say. Yeah. My dad said he used to sell world, world encyclopedia books and he'd walk in the house and if it's all messed up and ragged and dirty, he'd have to find something good to say. He, you know, she said, he would say, you know, ma'am, you know, that's a really nice doorknob you got. It's just so nice. Where you get that doorknob from? Is that custom? Because you can find nothing else to say. We look at people, we automatically want to tear them down. Automatically. But we want, we get mad when people look at us and say the same thing. Are you listening? Take a, about two seconds, three seconds. We got about three seconds. Take about three seconds and just go through your little friendship list. And how many of those friends, not the associates, them friends, how many of them do you think you really need to be? Can, can, can you lose one of them? Are all of them good for you? Here's the problem. These days we call associates friends. People hang, oh, that's my homie. No. <laughs> Not if they doing that. If you can't get your homie, your homeboy, your homegirl to come to church, they are not your friend. Because every friend, watch this, every single friend, every last one of them, I got, go to church. Amen. I don't hang out with, I talk to everybody, but I don't hang out with people who don't go to church. Told you a gentleman the other day. I said, man, how's the family? Oh, man, I'm sorry, Apostle. I know I ain't talked to you in a minute. Uh, me and the wife got a divorce. I said, oh, man, I'm, I'm sorry about that. He said, we weren't on the same page, man. She didn't want to go to church, and I'm going to church, and I'm trying to grow my relationship with God, and she's trying to support the kids not to go to church. So I can't do that, man. We got to be on the same page, and I'm the head of the house. Yeah. If I'm trying to lead us in the right direction, you ain't, you ain't been bothered, and you're going to get mad at me because I want to go to an evening service. I can't do that. So I'm like, Amen. You ain't going to let me mess up my relationship with God. Listen, if you don't want to go to church, don't stop me. Yeah. Don't stop the kid. You being a devil and you influence, you acting like the devil, influencing other people. Yeah. I'm going to say it one more time. If you, ain't, if you can't invite your friends to church and they come, you need some new ones. Because they invite you to the club, bowling, skating, Card parties, barbecues, and whatever else y'all be going to. Because this age is, is something else. I don't know what they be, they be doing some stuff. Amen. But you got to watch the people you are with. Listen to your conversation with every day. What are you talking about? What are you texting? What are you emailing? What are you sending out on social media? What kind of vibe? Is that of God? Or is it of my flesh? Are you listening? You shouldn't be co-signing folk just doing evil. Well, they would ask them, that's not me. No, you have to be a voice of righteousness. Hey, you know, if we're going to be friends, you can't keep doing that. I cannot be associated. The text says, don't be friends with angry people or people that fuss and, and cause issues and get in trouble. That's pretty much what it's saying all the time because if you're not careful, you'll find yourself entangled in the same thing. And I'm just here. They go, yeah, my buddy, yeah, my Oh, you know what Tim said, so-and-so said. I didn't say nothing. Well, we was together. We, you, me, Tim, Vase, or whatever. So now you put me in some, I don't even know what y'all talking about. Because I was in the room, I didn't engage, but if I didn't stop it, if I said, hey man, we can't, we can't have breakfast. We, as brothers, we didn't come for this. Are you listening? Consider the people in your path, because your next is coming. And people will hinder you from your next because they can see greatness in you. And they don't see greatness in them. And if they don't want to go where you're going and they know they need to ride your coattail to get to their next, 
but they don't want to go where you're going. They're not going to say, go ahead, I'll catch the next train. They're going to kind of hold you back and make you feel, anybody made you feel bad because you didn't give them some money and they didn't have none. Why should I feel bad because I didn't give you some money and you didn't, don't, do you not work? Yeah, I work. But why do you need $50 to pay your cell phone bill? Maybe you can't afford a cell phone. People don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. Oh, I thought we was cool. We are cool. What they got to do with my money? That hundred dollars showed on my gas bill. Did you pay the gas bill last month? Yeah. How come you paid this month? Are you still working? Yes. Why you didn't save a hundred dollars for your gas bill? Or save a little extra because you don't know what it's going to be. If you thought you was running short two weeks in a month, in, in, in this month, why didn't you cut your gas off for the next two weeks? It's cold, but you ain't got no money. See, people want you to be responsible for their irresponsibility. Y'all not hear me. Listen, your failure to plan is not, doesn't cause an emergency on my part. And they'll make you feel bad. I'm talking about those people in your past. They go spend their money do their, whatever they want to do with it and want to hold you hostage to help them. Oh, she got it. She can do it. And guess why I got it? Because I ain't giving it to you. Because if I keep giving you, I won't have nothing. Look, watch this. If I got my hand out, I'd rather have it out given than have it out of access. Because when I ask, I, I become subject to whatever you want to give me. But when I give, you are also subject to whatever I want to give you. I'm going to number next. I'm just trying to help somebody. And see, I asked the Lord to choose my friends. So I ain't got a lot of friends. My children don't even call me asking me for money. It is a blessing. Let me help you be financially sufficient so you ain't get, so you can get out of my pocket. You was in my pocket. You was in my house. You ain't in my house. You don't even be in my pocket, man. You got a job. You need to figure that out. Amen. Amen. Y'all look at Sam like, oh, I can't ask him for no money. <laughs> That's not the look I'm getting. I better ask him for no money. That's not true. But if I don't help empower you, That's right. are you listening? When's the last time I ran up to one of y'all and said, hey, hey, can you get five dollars? I ain't got no gas. Never. What's the last time your pastor walked up to you and asked you for 15 or 20 dollars because he ain't got nothing to eat? So why should you ask me the same thing if you got a job? To my being responsible. You want your next to be great. But I can't be, I can't have integrity in God. And when I have integrity in God, I'm going to say this, I'm going to get to the number next. Integrity in God is how you live every day. It's not how much you come in here and shout and praise God and scream and run and all. That's wonderful. But if you're not serving God in your life with integrity, making the very best decisions you can with the help of the Lord, and we need his help because we're going to get in trouble if we don't. We get in trouble with his help. This is how I am empowered. This is how I help my family, my friends. I ain't got no friends asking me for money. Very seldom. And I don't call them. Because we operate on the same page. Oh, if I need, if you need me, I got you. But that chance is slim. Are you listening? Consider the people in your path. Number two, you got to consider the place you're in. Acts, this is a good one right here. Acts 8. 26 and 27 says and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip saying rise and go towards the south unto the way that go down from Jerusalem unto Gaza which is a desert and, and he arose and went and behold a man of Ethiopia a eunuch of great authority under Canaan's queen of the Ethiopians and he who had the charge of all her treasures Amen. Amen. And had come to Jerusalem 
to worship. Then Philip opened his mouth and began the, uh, at the same began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. He wasn't gossip. He met a man of great wealth. He tr didn't try to manipulate him. Didn't try to slick talk him. Hey man, can you hook me up? <laughs> Y'all hear me? He gave him the word of the Lord. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. They came to a body of water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What doeth hinder me from being baptized? Now it's the same, says Jesus, says Philip, preach the word of the Lord of Jesus Christ's salvation to the eunuch. And on their travels, they came across some water. He said, okay, no, so what stopped me from being baptized? Since you say, Jesus said, I got to be baptized. And Philip said, if thou believe with all thy heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Consider the place you are in. You've got to be careful of the place you're in because you don't know who you're going to meet. Whether you're in the store, at the gas station, on the job, walking down the street, at the laundromat, wherever it is, you have to carry yourself in a way where you can talk about the Lord. And if you get in front of a, in a corporate setting and you're among presidents and vice presidents and CEOs and, and, and directors of operations, that's, that don't intimidate you because I am a child of the Most High God. Amen. And I got one word before we start to meet. There's any, any saved folk in the house. Right. Because I'm trying to have a Holy Ghost conversation. Yeah. Even in your handling your money. Handling your business. Does not the Bible says in all our ways acknowledge God? Yeah. We want to acknowledge him when we get in trouble. But he said here, he met a rich man that covered, that took care of all the money of the queen in Ethiopia. Oh, he got status. Well, Philip says, hey, have you heard? I know what you do, but let me tell you what I do. Have you heard about Jesus? All right. Come on now. Yeah. Yes, we end up like the folk on the, 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 that I talked about before. They start talking about what they do, and we they let us suck us right on in like a vacuum and get caught up in this foolishness and said, hold on. I got a better conversation than that. Amen. First of all, let's pray so we can clear out all this demonic stuff going on. Again, if you ain't got no friends that are stopping praying with you, you got the wrong friend. God will put you in a situation to speak to somebody, to encourage somebody. And you don't have to know a ton of scriptures. You do not. But you do have to know God. Because your experience in God is greater than any scripture you will ever have. If you can't prove God in your heart, you can't convince me that this works. Always be willing to present Christ to people. Don't be afraid to shit. You can be in a playing cards. It don't matter. Go on. I hope I hope you win your I hope you win your hand. I hope you do. I hope you win your hand. But the reality is, there's nothing wrong. We're having a God conversation. You may mess around and start shouting and mess up the whole car. <laughs> you can get somebody delivered right there. I don't know why they brought me over here. Just come on over here with me. And you fussing the whole time. I ain't got time for this. They've got me over here. And I ain't got to only have for 20 minutes. And they've been 30 minutes already. I got to go. Instead of complaining, say, God, why did you bring me here? And who it is that I need to talk to? What do I need to pray for somebody? Do I need to lay hands on somebody? Do somebody need to be healed? Do I need to prophesy to somebody? Why am I here? I'm not here for no reason at all. Amen. So I want to portray God every time I leave my house. Right. No matter where I'm going. Are you listening? Yeah. You might find yourself getting stuck in a train. Yeah. Or stuck in traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're going to add in those traffic. They're going to make me late. Instead of complaining, say, God, since you got me here. On this expressway. Yeah. And I can't move. I thought I'd talk to you for a little bit. 
turn your move, move, music up and bumping it loud. Turn it down. Yeah. And you ain't got to put on the church music to talk to God. Just start talking to him. Yeah. You ain't got to talk to him like I talk to him. Talk to him like you talk to him. Because your issue ain't mine. Your victory ain't mine. Your faith ain't mine. Tell your neighbor, do you. Now that's when you do you with God. Say, you know, my back's been hurting in the last three, four days. I don't know. You know, I need you to do something about this back. That's right. Yeah. Very much. Uh -huh. yeah. That's right. You know, I done took Tylenol. I done put some cream and Bengay on it. I done Crazy. stretched it out. And it's still hurting. I done drinking water. Everything everybody told me to do, yeah. I did it with my back. It's still hurting. Lord, I need you to work on my back. Now, listen, I'm just going to believe that by the time I get out this traffic, my back is not going to be hurting. Now watch this. This is how you get it. I'm going to tell you how to get God moved. You told me. Yes, sir. Say it again now. I'm trying to help somebody. Yes, sir. You told me yes. that whatever I needed, you would supply. You told me that whatever I called you, you would hear me. You told me. Come on now. That you were my strength. You told me by the stripes of your son, I am healed. So I'm claiming faith on the word, on what you said. And you said you're a man that cannot lie. See, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to show you how to get God to move right away. Because he may not move because I'm asking, but he will move because he can't lie about what he said he was going to do. Like when your mama tell you, I'm going to buy you that bicycle for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to get it for your birthday. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, Santa may not do it, but say, Mama, you said it. <laughs> if you keep saying, Mama, you said it long enough, son, let me help you. I know you're a little older, but you keep saying, Mama, you said it. Mama going to have to do it. You watch what I tell you. Yes, she might say, you old enough to do it yourself, but she's going she to end up doing it because that's your son. You know? okay. I'm trying to cook you up right quick. Okay. 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 <laughs> Mama, you said, you said, you said. Now she can't go back in the word. God will never go, listen, y'all hear me. God will not go back on his word, but we don't know how to engage with God because we're complaining and complaining. And God says, I don't give a damn. Have I not brought you out before? You're talking, but this is, you're in the middle of your necks. Instead of standing and seeing the salvation of the Lord, you're crying and complaining. Don't you see me working it out? You're crying about the rain, but did I not give you an umbrella? Did I not give you rain boots? Did I not give you a shawl? Why is someone explaining? Are you okay, aren't you? Yeah. yeah, but it's raining. Stop crying about the rain and just dance in the rain. It's just water. Yeah. It's just water. Well, I just did my hat. Did I not give you money to do it the last time? You can do it again. Matter of fact, while you're out there in the rain, say, Lord, since you sent your blood to cover me, just to direct the water from heaven, let it wash off anything else on me that ain't, that ain't like you. Understand the place you're in. God has you at a place, at a church, at a job, at a neighborhood with people for a purpose. It's not just to laugh and joke and have a good time. I don't care if you go into the boat. If you hit them sevens, come across and you're going to say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You ought to start jumping and shouting, hallelujah. They ought, to, they ought to put you on video. I just won $20. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Bible says those that are grateful in the least Shall be grateful in the month. You start complaining about that 20, he won't let you hit that 2,000. You better say hallelujah for that $20 bill. Because you know you're going to put it back in the slot machine again. I can't get no help up here. I'm talking about the place you're in. I don't God everywhere you are. Number one. Consider the people in your path. Prepare for your next. In order to do that, yeah, you have to consider the people in your path. Number two, you have to consider the place you're in. 
Because you're not there for nothing. You're there for a reason. God has a plan for your life. The text says, for I know the plans that I think of you, said the Lord. They're thoughts of peace. There's no stress, no worry. There's a song we used to lay out some years ago called Don't Worry, Be Happy. Why am I stressed when God got me? Amen. I'm going to say this. I'm going to get to my last point. Do you not know that if the Lord died for your sins, do you think he won't take care of you? He made the ultimate sacrifice already. Are y'all listening? Yeah. So if he loved you enough to purchase you with his blood, he gonna do the rest. Does that make sense? Yeah. Number three, consider the promises of the kingdom. This is the part we show. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. I'm going to say that one more time. Y'all missed that one. Hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. You got to believe God and believe God and believe God. And when it ain't going right, believe God. Amen. 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 Moses was at the, as, at the Red Sea and there was water in front of him. But the children of Israel, now the, the scripture, if you read it, it was, when you study, it's about six million of them. It wasn't a couple of people. There was a ton of them. And Pharaoh's army behind them, they trapped at the sea. They start complaining to Moses. Moses falls down on his face. And God says, man, get up. Get up. I done done ten, I did call you to do ten plagues, ten wonders. And you worried about a sea and some soldiers. I did all this great and mighty work through you, and now you want to go, oh my God, what are we going to do? You acting like them, man. You the leader. And God has placed you in people's lives to be a leader. And you cannot act like the people that are complaining or faith. Less. He says, get up. What do you got in your hand? I got the staff. He said, you stretch it out over the waters. I ain't done with you. Tell your neighbor, God ain't done with you yet. God has already given you what, what you need. You already have it. You don't need to look for nothing else. Just use what you have. The faith that you have, get, you have that's all you need. Do not ask God for more faith because you're not going to get it. I just disappointed some people. God just need a little more faith. If he knows the thoughts that he thinks about you, if he's already planned your life out, why would he incrementally give you faith? He, when you were born, he deposited all of the faith in you you will ever need to overcome every problem you have. You need to use what you got. Because Paul says, when you ask for more faith, what you're asking for is another problem to use your faith. I'm not asking God for more faith. Let me use what I got. I don't need another problem. Amen. I tell the Lord all the time, God, I know the anointing comes with a cost. I want all the anointing you're going to give me, but I ain't got to have all the cost. You keep some of that pain. Some of that pain, I just don't have to have. Can we bypass some of that? I can't give it all of it, but can we get bypass some of it? Are you listening? Yes. Amen. Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with my right hand of righteousness. God, is, this is the, the promises of the kingdom. The reason I can celebrate my next, even if I went from a good place to a not so good place, I'm still happy in God because God promised to help me. Yeah. He promised to never leave me alone. He promised to be there. And I get it. Sometimes you don't feel God because we're human and we like to feel. We feel better when a baby feels better when it's cuddled and comforted. You feel better when a loved one 
knows you. That's why we hug folk when we come into church, because some folk ain't had a hug all week. Some folk ain't even talked to you all week. So you're going to get a hello, how are you? I bless you with joy and favor and give you a Holy Ghost hug because we're glad you're here. Genuinely glad that you are here. I don't care who you are because ain't nobody better than the next person. And you ought to come in here with an expectation that, has, that God has something better for you next year and next week than you had last year or last week. My tomorrow will be better. Yeah. And if it's not because you claim you're looking at what you got to do tomorrow, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. One, God, I thank you that I woke up on the green side of the grass. That's the first thing. Second of all, I'm glad that you gave me some challenges because it, it does nothing but allow me to exercise my anointing and my prophetic power to speak those things that are not as though they were. You allow me to operate as a kingdom citizen on this planet. So I'm looking at life from a whole different perspective. Only thing I'm mad about because I can't do more ministry. That's what I'm mad about. That I can't talk to more people. That I can't get more people healed. That I can't prophesy and preach to more people. That's my problem. My problem is not what I got to deal with. Well, everybody got something to deal with. Uh -huh. right. That's right. But God's going to give me a mindset of how to handle it. He's going to bring people in my life to how to resolve it. I'm not going to worry. It says, I'm not making this stuff up. Jeremiah 29 says, thoughts of peace. So confused when you when 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 you frustrated, but you say, I'm a child of the king. Yeah. Oh, you can get in front of saved for I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, you can say that when you're around saved people. Can you say that in the face of the enemy? Come on, man. Come on. Okay, now. When the devil get in your house and your husband and your wife acting crazy, uh -huh. are you gonna cuss them out? Now we got a domestic problem going on? <laughs> or are you going to understand it's the devil trying to get between you and your husband? Amen. Devil, you and like, you got, I ain't told you the devil, even if you got the devil in you, he coming out of you because he's sure ain't in me. Because I just got home, but I walked into this foolishness. I didn't come home for this. No, we're going to correct this first of all. Close that down. We're going to pray. We're going to get this oil. You're going to anoint me. I'm going to anoint you. Now you listen. And I'm not going to walk around this house for three days and not talk to you. I'm not doing that either. That ain't God. I don't want that tension in this house. This is a Holy Ghost filled house. I can't pray and sing my church songs right when you got an attitude. If they keep an attitude, they just want to be on me getting right next to them. I, I tell folks all the time when you when your husband or wife mad at you, just grab them and hold them. Just hold them and start kissing them. Let me go. I ain't letting you go. I'm like Jacob. I ain't letting you go with the angel. I ain't letting you go to your blessing. You got to work it out. Because we ain't doing that other stuff. I'm gonna, either you're going to change your attitude or the dinner going to burn. The, the greens are burning. You can figure it out. You got to figure it out. But what we're not going to do is this. With no kids in the house, I tell you what to do. <laughs> we go to bed, we gonna, we, we, when we get through, you're going to be all woke, us going to be all right. We ain't doing this, we're not doing this. You don't let the devil stay in your house. Just like you make your brothers and sisters, uh uh, y'all kiss and make up, don't know, hit your brother, y'all stop. You need to do that for your husband and your wife. Are you listening? Yes. Don't hold grudges with people. I ain't talking to her. Why not? Amen. She said this. She didn't do that. And I'm saying she when women get mad at me when I do this, I'm just telling the truth because men don't do that. Oh. You're not a real man. They don't say gossip. Yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> we get over because with men, that's then we're going to blow. So we, don't, we ain't trying to do that. So we resolve it and we keep moving. I'm coming to a point. 
But you don't know what your next is going to bring you to. Your next may be COVID. Young man, I walked in, young man said, man, I was, I was sick last week. I had COVID. I said, well, praise God, good you're here. You didn't have to be here. Amen. 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 Yeah, no, praise God for his life. Amen. But I'm going to tell you what's killing more people than COVID and guns. Your tongue. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. Do you know God really don't care? You know what, when it says thou shalt not commit murder in the Old Testament? And then New Testament, Jesus says, love thy neighbor as thyself. God is more concerned. We early. I'm going to let y'all out early today. God is more concerned with the life and the health of your spirit than he is your body. We were all so curved, but they, they killed those. 20 people at that school just went and shot the kids up. That is hard. It is. But God is more concerned about the 5,000 people that you messed up putting foolishness on social media. Amen. You didn't kill them physically, but you killed them spiritually. Do you know if you cause a person's countenance to fall, if you cause them to be embarrassed, cause them to feel shame, yeah. you have just killed their yeah. spirit. Yeah. When the spirit dies, you are dead. Do you know this body that you love and you dress up so much is not going to heaven? It's not going to seek God. It's going back to the earth. We are damaged by our spirit. When you, when you are heartbroken, ain't nothing wrong with your heart. It's still beating just fine. It's your mind that's messed up. When you can't sleep. You can't eat. I just want to be alone. I don't want to talk to nobody. You feeling psychological pain. They broke my heart. I don't know where to get that sand from anyway. Your head is, because your spirit is jacked up. Because somebody hurts you real bad. Not physically. I'd rather you fight me than hurt my feelings. Because whatever wounds I get will heal. But some folk are scarred for the rest of their life. But what happened to them? Because you can't always decide what you remember and what you forget. Because it's a lot of stuff and a lot of people I'd love to forget, but I still remember. Yeah. It's a lot of stuff and a lot of people I still remember that I'd like to forget. Yeah. Since I can't control that, I got to live with that. Are you listening to me? Yeah. You got to be careful with how you talk to people. Amen. I was just telling them, you didn't have to tell them like that. Amen. Would you want somebody to talk to you like that? No, but I'm just saying one excuse after the other. And when I find out people are like that, they just you just want to be in that next. You know what I do? I move on to my next. I leave you right there. Because I ain't got time to counsel or give advice to somebody that ain't trying. That's like trying to give a dog to become a cat. It's just not gonna happen. It's a dog. So why am I, come on, just meow for me one time. Just, just one time, you can do it. That's how foolish that looks. When you decide you're going to be the way you are, I'm just going to my next. Pastor won't take my calls no more. I guess why? You ain't wasting my time with your foolishness. There's so much they do the same thing. Because I'd rather give you a thousand dollars than an hour of my time. Because time I will never get back. I'm going to make a thousand dollars, but I can't get back time. Are you listening? Amen. Prepare for your next. Because next is coming. Amen. Build your relationship with the Lord. Live your life, not just while we're in church. Oh, this is the comfortable setting. You know, this, this is the, this is, this is the, 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 the you know, this, this is a setup. Uh -huh. You ain't got to worry about no bills. 
you got to you don't have to worry about all the people you didn't like you left somewhere else. Because right. folk don't come to a church that they don't like the people there. Amen. So everybody here you like. That's why you keep coming and keep coming. So we have good fellowship, conversation, good worship, hopefully a good word. Amen. 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 If you don't fall asleep or text on your phone. Yeah. I had to tell people all the time, we ain't got 10 million people. I see all y'all. <laughs> like you see me, I see you. But you're here because you're comfortable in this place. Yeah. So this is this is a, 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 a it's kind of like a fixed fight. It's easy to look over. Yeah. Ain't nobody went out to smoke yet. I know you probably answered because you need that smoke. And you can't. Wish I can't wait till he's still talking. But you holding it. You follow what I'm saying? Well, we can't get out of here. I tell you, take church with you. Take church home. Take church to work. Take church when you go to the bowling alley. So if I can't do it in church, I can't do it here. That'll help you. That'll help you. It really will. Because sometimes we need examples. We need vehicles to help us get to our next. Because God is trying to do some amazing things in every last one of your lives. But you have to be in position. I said, consider the place you're in. you got to be in position, not just in your physical self, but in your spirit, in your mind. Your mind has to be, let this mind be in Christ, which is also in Christ Jesus. you got to let it be in you. you got to get your head together. And the Holy Ghost can help you if you let it. Amen. 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 Lean over to somebody and tell them your next is coming. Your next is coming. It's the best next you ever had. Put your hands together and give God some praise. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord.